Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. If you're watching these videos, you're probably enrolled in my class. If you stumbled across them on the internet, please learn the, the material in the fashion that your instructors want you to learn it. These videos are intended for my students. This is, the, uh, I believe, the fourth video in a series of lab videos for my Part 1 A&P students here at Del Mar College. If you are in my class, hopefully you're following along on the list of things to know. We're on page five. We're going to be talking about the abdominal planes and regions. And then we're going to talk about some uh, sections through the body. Now, if you go through the list of things to know, one of the things I haven't pointed out yet is it will usually tell you a page number and a figure to look at. That page number and that figure is going to be in your laboratory manual, which should look like this. Okay, this is an older one. Oh, I believe this is the current one, the sixth edition. So. If you want to follow along in the lab manual so that you can understand what I'm talking about or you can review, great. We also have pictures of all these models on our um, anatomy and physiology resources uh, canvas shell. And there's a way to log into that if you did the introduction to my course. So we're going to be going over page uh, 14 in the lab manual or page 5 on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the list of things to know. And I'm going to be going over these structures. By the way, if you are looking at page 14, those are pretty good pictures of me there. Uh, just kidding. Um, so I'm going to go over all this stuff with you. And everything you need to know is in your lab manual, in your lecture text. And you can follow along using the list of things to know. Now, we're going to go over the planes and sections of the, or what we call the nine abdominopelvic regions. Now, what you have to remember is when we're talking about the subject, it's the subject's right and left, not yours. So since this is the breastplate of a human being, and my right is on this side, and that's my left, this would be his right and his left. Got it? So, now, we have several planes that we can um, sort of dissect or section the nine abdominal pelvic regions in. These two are called the right and left lateral planes because they're on either side. The right lateral plane and the left lateral plane. Now. This one is called the transpyloric plane, and this one is called the transtubercular plane. Transpyloric, transtubercular. Now, when, if we put those planes on here, we get nine abdominal pelvic regions. Those regions will eventually be important because if you're examining a patient and someone says, hey, the patient in room three is having severe pain in the right hypochondriac region, that's going to help you narrow down which particular structures could be causing abdominal pain in that area, which organs would be found there. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to learn the regions. So I like to start with this one in the middle where the umbilicus is or your belly button. It's called the umbilical region or it's also called the gastric region. Gaster means belly and that's the middle of your belly. Umbilicus means belly button. So that's your umbilical region or gastric region. The area right above it, right up here, about where your solar plexus is, where your ribs meet, is called the epigastric region. Epi always means uppermost, or on top of, or outermost. And so that's the epigastric region. If I go below the gastric region, this area down here can be called the hypogastric region. It could ask, actually also be called the pubic region because that's where the pubis would be. So we can say hypogastric or you could say pubis. On either side of the gastric region, these two over here share the same name, but one's the right, the other one's the left. On the right side, we have what's called the right lumbar region and the left lumbar region. Now, the lumbar is the low back, but if you grabbed here and stuck your thumbs around the back side, they would be in the lumbar region. So this is right lumbar and left lumbar. Now, the area on either side of that on the bottom here would be called the right and left inguinal or iliac region. They're called that because the inguinal canal runs through there or the inguin or also the hip bone that would be found over here would be your iliac bone. So this would be the right iliac region or right inguinal region. Either one is acceptable. This would be the left iliac or left inguinal region. Finally, we're stuck with this area here and here. Now, the area here and here are also called the right and left, and then they share the same name. It's called the hypochondriac region. The reason it's called that is because your ribs are mostly bone, but before the ribs join the breastbone or sternum, there's some cartilage here. That allows your ribs to expand and contract and not be snapped very easily. 
And since the, the, the root word for cartilage is chondro, and this is below the cartilage, that's called the right hypochondriac region. This is called the left hypochondriac region. So you should be able to run through these nine regions and rip them off the top of your head very quickly. Do it till you can't stand it. Do it three more times. Do it till you understand it and can teach it to someone else without looking at your notes. Gastric, epigastric, hypogastric. Right and left lumbar, right and left iliac, right and left hypochondriac. We'll be asking a couple of those on the lab exam, so make sure you know them. Thanks for watching. Hope you had as much fun as I did. See you in the next video.